Hi, Mr. Carter. I am. Feeling? Thank you, Madam Chair. How are you feeling? Um, I feel good. I feel good. Thank you for good. asking. I'm in I think we now, need to reset I, the I clock, please. Now, okay, great. Soon. There's your five minutes. Thank you. Um, and thank all of you for being here, the panel members. I, I want to talk uh, real quickly about my, my legislation, Enhanced Access to Affordable Medicines Act. There was a, a recent uh, GAO report that said that last minute brand labeling changes were a factor that could potentially delay uh, approval rates for generics. And, and, you know, approval rates for generics is something that concerns me very much. We give brand name drugs seven years for a patent, but in reality, that seven years is more like 10 or 12 years because it takes so long to get a generic to market. And I, I'm trying to do all that I can to, to speed that process up so that we can get generics to market as soon as possible. Congress attempted to address this. We attempted to address this problem in 2010, and, but there's still gaps in implementation that have not been fixed with this problem. The FDA has also stated that working overtime to approve generic medicines, but that issue still exists as well. My legislation, the Enhanced Access to Affordable Medicines Act, would propose minor revisions to close the gaps to the existing law and it would prevent last minute brand labeling changes from further delaying generic entry. Mr. Gall, I want to ask you, um, are last minute brand label changes still a problem? Thank you for the question. And, and yes, they are still a problem. In 2020 alone, over a six month period, there were 36 products that were delayed due to late uh, label changes. When, when when this happens, does the FDA have a, a does the FDA have to review the updated labeling amendment, and, and that's what um, significant delays of approval? So the delay goes in a couple of different directions. First off, the the brand company submits their label. The FDA has to review it and approve it. Once they review and approve, then the um, and that's being reviewed cannot be approved until that and a label has been changed to match what the brand company just put in. Your bill, which we support, will prevent that from happening, giving the FDA the opportunity to go ahead and approve, and then within 60 days from the approval, the generic company will make that label change. And of course, you have the one caveat in there, if it's a warning change, then that 60-day period would not happen, the approval could not happen. So that protects the, the American public. Good. Thank you, Mr. Gall. Thank you for, for, um, for that. Now I want to talk about my Made in America Act. Um, you, you know, I've always said there's a difference in, in recognizing something or, or a difference in recognizing something and realizing it. I think we've all known for some time that we've got too many manufacturers, too many pharmaceutical manufacturers um, offshore, and we need to repatriate them and get them back onshore. We realize that whenever... Uh, this pandemic set in and whenever we realized just how um, dependent we were on, on foreign countries for our pharmaceutical needs and for our PPE needs as well. But one thing that this bill also addresses is the um, the, the advanced manufacturing that, that we're seeing a lot of now. And that's what the Made in America Act tries to do. It creates an independent pathway that's separate of drug products at FDA to access to access these manufacturing processes. Dr. Asham, I wanted to ask you, does the FDA currently, current, does the FDA's current review process complicate bringing these technologies to market? I think we, we well, to state it simply, we have been seeking reforms, and some of that is reflected in the, in the provisions that we advocated for uh, in the PDUFA 7 agreement to uh, require that the FDA, uh, to get a commitment by the FDA to uh, engage with stakeholders and publish a, a, a strategy document outlining specific actions they'll take to facilitate the use of advanced manufacturing technologies. I also note that we are uh, supportive of the creation of the pathway uh, laid out in your legislation, and, and we'll note uh, generally that the reason we are uh, believe strongly in these kinds of reforms is these technologies offer the ability to optimize efficiency and promote scalab scalability. Good, good. Thank you. Well, y'all are great. We need y'all on more panels. Y'all love my, my legislation and you're helping me here. Y'all, I'm on, I'm on, Madam Chair, I'm going to give you back 19 seconds. Thank you. Thank all of y'all. I appreciate it. And I'll yield back. Bravo. Where are you?